Hello guys, Winston here. Carbide Create recently surpassed build version 300, and looking at the description of changes, I am really excited. There are a lot of new features associated with this release, not the least of which is the fact that the program is now free to use by anyone. It now exports standard G-code, which means any CNC can run files generated in Carbide Create. The code monkeys at Carbide3D also seem to have addressed a lot of my little annoyances with the program. I thought it would be a good idea to revisit an old project to see if any of the changes materially improved the usability of the program, most notably in the efficiency of its toolpathing. A couple months ago, I made a simple gift for my friend as a thank you for letting me couchsurf while I was in California. My friend is a caffeine-dependent individual, and I thought a little plaque bearing words of praise for coffee would be well received. This was a very basic project, so basic in fact that I did most of the work in Carbide Create. If you want to see how that project turned out, you can check out the build montage I uploaded on my second channel. But I'll summarize it for you now. Start with a maple board, cut some stylized text, paint it, and stick some magnets on the back. And you'll notice during the montage that a lot of time was spent with the end mill retracted and moving between letters. But with some patience, this was the end result, and I thought it came out pretty great. And I kind of wanted one for myself. So today, let's fix that and make another one that's tailored for me, and test whether or not the carving algorithm has improved at all. I'll start by opening Carbide Create, and enter the relevant parameters of my job. I'll be cutting my piece from some quarter inch maple. I've used this stuff before, it's available at a certain blue themed hardware store chain. I'll also set my retract height super low since Carbide Create does full retracts between toolpath segments and it's a horrendous waste of time. I'll also preemptively restrict myself to a 3 by 5 inch work area. Now that I'm in Carbide Create's design tab, I'll first import any graphics I want included. I learned the first time that opening a file doesn't add it to your canvas, it replaces everything. So if you have two separate SVGs you want to combine, do it in Inkscape. If you want to combine a graphic with some custom text, open the SVG before adding text. Anyhow, the height of my piece will be limited to about 5 inches because I want the grain set horizontally as opposed to vertically. I think the finished piece will look better in this orientation. The text I'll break into multiple lines based on what fits and what I think looks good. I'll also vary the font size for special emphasis. Lastly, I'll draw out a rectangle to define a contour to cut out my mini plaque. The vast majority of everything will be cut with a V-bit. Since I'm interested in whether or not Carbide Create's toolpathing algorithm got any smarter, I'll highlight all of my text at once and lump it under one operation. I initially thought I'd V-carve my mountain graphic using a 60 degree drill mill, so I fought through Carbide Create's tool library options to add it to the program. My worry was that some of the gaps in my graphic would be wide enough to swallow the cutting head of my 90 degree V-bit, which has an eighth inch shank. My drill mill has a quarter inch shank, so it never plunged deeper than its cutting edges. But I came back later and drew a 1 8 inch reference circle and realized that the 90 degree V-bit would do just fine. The final cutout would be done with a 1 16th inch end mill. And you'll notice that I changed all of the default feed rates because time is money. Now comes the test that I've been waiting for. Will there be a lot of needless movement between letters, or will my CNC actually spend most of its time cutting? And... what's this? An intelligent toolpath? Hallelujah! Praise the Carbide 3D gods, our prayers have been answered. I'm not gonna lie, I was pleasantly surprised by these results. Carbide Create has taken a huge step forward in terms of usability, and while there are some lingering user interface and user experience issues to iron out, my usual instinct to open up Fusion 360 for all projects, complex and simple, has weakened just a tiny bit. That being said, I did use Fusion 360 to design the stand for this piece. I needed a 3D model to ensure that the design of my leg would sit flat on any surface. All in all, I'm glad I revisited this project. I got a nifty desk tchotchke out of it, and an improved opinion of Carbide Create. That's all I have for this week's video, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a week or two with the next episode of my Intro to CNC series.